I guess you must have seen in your life, at some point, pie charts like this one or this one. Maybe you have even created some like it, thinking it would be cool to have a 3D effect. Well, if you have, this is the least of the issues that you will encounter in the field of data visualization. Some data visualizations can be intentionally misleading and it can prove useful to know the most common tricks. Let's start with a classic, truncating the axis. Let's take a graph that is called a bar plot. For instance, the goal would be to show differences in grades in a standardized test like PISA among different groups like students from diverse countries. If I show you this plot, you will probably tend to believe that there are very significant differences among the groups, won't you? But have you closely looked at the y-axis? It's not starting from zero, is it? Now, let's plot exactly the same data, but with the y-axis starting at zero. Here we go. You see? The differences are way less impressive, aren't they? One of the big issues that we have is that Microsoft Excel, among other softwares, tends to automatically truncate axes whenever the software feels like it will make the differences between bars more visible. No wonder that so many people follow their example. Anyway, a graph alone is not sufficient to demonstrate that there are significant differences between groups. You need statistical tests. In this situation, an ANOVA to tell if French students are more or less performant than Japanese ones, for instance. But not everyone knows that, and graphs are often used to showcase differences among groups. It is common to exaggerate differences by zooming on the top part of the graph. Here is an example drawn from the Brexit, used to convey the idea that leavers were much, much more uh, represented than remainers. Such practice is not restricted to bar plots, by the way. Here is another example based on curves. I suppose it makes sense to make such a zoom, but ideally, if you do so, you should signal to the reader what you are doing. There are conventions that allow you to tell that there's a break in the y-axis. Here is one commonly used for bar plots. The problem is that very popular softwares also don't have this kind of convention ready, ready to use. So we have talked about truncated axes, now let's talk a bit about perspective and 3D, shall we? Let's think about the shares uh, of a set of items in the sales of a company. When you see this plot, especially if we do not provide values, that you are inclined to think that item D is the most important one, the, the one with the most sales, aren't you? Well, let's stop using perspective now, shall we? What do we see? If we take, we rotate it a bit, then item B and item D represent exactly the same percentages. It was not that obvious on the previous graph. I'm not saying that 3D pie chart should be banned, after all, if you are not going too far in terms of perspective, it is less of a problem. But still, more often than not, it does not add much information, and it is advisable to refrain to use them. Last but not least, there's another technique to use graphs to make things appear larger than they actually are, especially in bar plots. It's making the width of the bar depend upon the height. height which increases the area of the plot and gives the impression that it is much larger than it actually is. Look at, look at those two representations, where we want to compare the differences in sales for houses and apartments. Um, if you look at the right bar, you may think that houses represent only a fraction of what was sold on the real estate market. Well, that is not a good representation. The width of the bars should be the same. Do not be misled by such very common manipulations.